you won't miss a thing on Sydney's 2UE. Uh, when I spoke to Barry O'Farrell last week, I asked him about the extent of this South West rail link. Uh, because for more than $2 billion, I can't believe uh, it doesn't cover more than two stations. And I asked the, pre the Premier at the time just how many stations does it cover? How many new stations does it involve? I think it's. Uh, I think the South West Rail Link is either three or four stations. Just I've only been able to identify two, Edmondson Park and, and Leppington. I, I just wonder, you say three or four. Um, well, because well, I... that, well, it certainly starts at Glenfield. Yeah. Um, it, certainly, it certainly has, um, it certainly has uh, Edmondson Park, it certainly has Leppington, uh, and I think there are, um, ultimately, and I'm not committing ourselves to this, Stuart, there are plans for, uh, there, there is a capacity to be further extended as well. Uh, just to clarify, because it is a huge amount of money, if we exclude Glenfield, how many stations does it involve? Two, three, four? It's two. It's two, it's two. It is. It's Edmondson, Parker and Leppington. Now, I've been saying for quite some time, uh, the expense involved there seems extraordinary. Now, of course, when it comes to infrastructure, uh, we'll take what we can get. Let's not kid ourselves. But the fact is, when you look at it, it's a lot of money. $2.1 billion. Uh, you wonder how it can cost that much when in Adelaide, a new rail line half the length with two new stations, Stabling Yard, will cost just $300 million. In Queensland, 12.4 kilometre stretch, the Moreton Bay Rail Link includes oh, please, six new stations, is Bob budgeted Carr. at just $1.15 billion. It is remarkable. Gavin Gatenby is a spokesman for Eco Transit. Uh, he says what we're looking at is a massive waste of money. He's on the line. Gavin, good morning. Oh, good morning, Stuart. Thank you for your time. Are you surprised at the extent of the cost of this project? Yes, absolutely astounded. I mean, the one that we've often compared it to is the Mandurah Line in uh, Perth. Right. Now, the Mandurah Line is 71 kilometres long, and it came in for $1.22 billion. Yeah. It included, uh, well, they pulled down half a city block to put in the underground platforms uh, in their CBD to connect to their version of Central Station. They had a kilometre of difficult tunnelling under, um, under their, their CBD. Then they had two long bridges over the Swan. And of the 11 stations on, on this line, nine of them have uh, fully integrated bus interchanges. Right. And eight of them have, in addition, massive uh, park and ride uh, facilities. We're talking about park and ride for hundreds of vehicles. So Mandurah, much more difficult project, much longer, um, and uh, through very similar to ter terrain to uh, South West Sydney. And yet much cheaper. And yet, mu you know, like we're talking a tenth of the cost. Yeah. And, that was, and that was finished in the teeth of um, the, the mining boom starting and sucking skilled labour out of Perth a savage industrial dispute and a doubling in the cost of steel and yet they still came in right on budget mm. and only six months over time. Uh, so it was built in four years, not three and a half. Well, now. this project's ahead of time in the southwest of Sydney, but uh, clearly on a per kilometre basis, it's far more expensive than other comparable projects. And the reason I put it to the Premier the other week was I'd had a look at this and seen, well, there's two stations involved, the costs continue to mount. How on earth can it cost that much additional money when it's basically a branch line off existing infrastructure anyway and it takes in two new stations? Well, look, in my opinion... What happened was that during the car years, we had Treasury. This is where, where yeah. the, the, the massive escalations begin. We had Treasury playing a very dangerous and improper game. They were, uh, were and, and I think still are, very much opposed to rail uh, infrastructure. And so they used their influence to have the cost estimates for those projects doubled, and then in the case of the South West Rail Link, doubled again. And the hope that they were entertaining was that... The politicians would look at it and say, hang on a second, that's too expensive not doing that. E exactly. Yeah. So the benefit-cost ratio of this thing would be completely destroyed and the opponents within Cabinet would win the day and they'd be able to save the money mm. for a, a motorway somewhere or something. And, of course, the problem was that eventually the proponents of the rail thing did triumph. But by then, these massive estimates were out there in public yes. and, of course, the construction industry were bidding up to them. Yeah. And they've become the norm.
So it is incredible. We're now faced with a situation $2.1 billion. That's for two stations. We think about that Northwest Rail Link, and obviously, again, that's a critical part of infrastructure. Uh, but if we're talking about $2.1 billion for two stations, how much is the Northwest Rail Link going to cost us eventually? Well, people are now talking about it. In the last years of the, uh, of the Labor administration, it was being talked of as a $7.5 billion project. Yeah. They're now talking about it being a $10 billion project. And, I mean, look, $10 billion is what the Swiss paid for the Goddard Base Tunnel. Right. Now, this, has been, this is the longest, deepest rail tunnel in the world. It's two and a half kilometres below ground level at one point, Goodness. going under the Alps. And it's engineered for high-speed rail, and it's 57 kilometres of double 9.5-metre tunnel. In other words, each of those mm. tunnels would would take two Sydney suburban rail tracks. And the trains are going to be going through it at up to 350 kilometres wow. an hour. So you can imagine yeah. the engineering... That's right. Yeah. And they built that entire thing for $10 billion. And, and they're finishing it off uh, now. All the tunnelling is completed. The fit-out on the way. And they're finishing it uh, now, and it's, it's $10 billion. And that includes two massive underground evacuation stations in case of some problem. Right, yep, yep. And 34 kilometres of additional access tunnels to get into the to the um, to the access uh, to the emergency access stations. So, I mean, you're talking about a truly heroic project. Yes, there. If yep. the Swiss were building the North West Railing, mm. the North West Railing, even if it were all in tunnel, if all 23 kilometres were in tunnel and only 15 is in tunnel, it would come in for less than 2.5 billion, <laughs> or probably less than 2 billion. And yet here we are already. We've bidded the price up towards 10 million, 10 billion dollars. Exactly, exactly. And and this has become what I call the New South Wales disease. And the danger is that, and other administrations around Australia recognise that it will start to spread, and that these costs, mm. you know, which are you know several times international norms, will become the go in Australia. And I think it's a ridiculous situation and I think we need a proper forensic inquiry into how this has happened and uh, who was responsible. It certainly is a massive whack when you look at it on a per kilometre basis. Look, I appreciate your time, Gavin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gavin Gatenby, a spokesman for Eco Transit. So it is extraordinary. I mean, when you consider on a, a per kilometre basis, far more expensive than comparable projects. And interesting what he's talking about there uh, with that huge tunnel in Switzerland. Now, this new rail link covers Edmonton Park and Leppington. And let's face it, even in those areas, uh, say you're at Denham Court getting towards Leppington, not a huge drive to, say, either Ingleburn, Macquarie Fields or Glenfield stations. Uh, the scheme was started under the former Labor government and the costs just keep on blowing out $2.1 billion now. It is a worthwhile project and we'll take what infrastructure we can get. But at these rates, the cost of the North West Rail Link, it'll outstrip the national debt. Transport Minister Gladys Berejiklian says the O'Farrell government's not responsible for a cost blowout of Sydney's South West Rail Link. The railway was originally supposed to be opened this year and cost $688 million. It's now said to cost three times more and won't be open until 2016. Minister Berejiklian says it's a huge price tag but points out the bill has not increased since the coalition came to power. The South West Rail Link cost has been $2.1 billion since 2010. When we came to government, we inherited the $2.1 billion price tag. Since that time, we've worked very hard to make sure we build the project on time and on budget. Uh, you may want to weigh in on that as well. You can give me a buzz. 13 13 32 is our number.